81 Test veteran, the All Blacks. He is the best analyst in this country. He's the best person to talk to on a Monday as we look back at that performance. Look ahead to Argentina. Justin, welcome back, mate. Good afternoon, Marty. I said that, look, it was a, it was a, a promotion as much of a test match, a bit of both, and I thought it was it was successful on both terms. Yeah, well, I tend to agree with you. You know, obviously, the All Blacks, um, as a brand, are always looking to grow, but equally they're looking for opportunities in the future and, and probably looking for potential sponsorship for the future as well. Um, they showed that they can take the game successfully to America and attract a good crowd um, and put on uh, a good spectacle. And I think they achieved all of those things um, and and probably would be quite comfortable with the fact that they, when they, when they left uh, San Diego, that they had achieved their ultimate goal, um, won a test match um, and, and ticked all those boxes that I just mentioned. Yeah, so rather than look in depth at that, because, Justin, it was always a test we were going to win, and when you put six debutants in, it's going to get a bit messy in the second half like it did. I think it's probably more important, if you agree, that we look at all three in a package and where are we at now before the three-week break, which we've got before Argentina. You agree? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I, I, I understand that, you know, Fiji are not a, a nation that's ever beaten us. Uh, they're trending in the right direction. Um, but ultimately, when, when you look at the calibre of the All Blacks and the depth that New Zealand rugby has, uh, the game was more of a spectacle showpiece. Yeah, yeah, uh, and that's than, okay. Than, than that's a okay. contest, yeah. yeah, for sure. Okay, so where are we at exactly? Those first three tests of the year, two against an English side, which gave us, you know, a, a, a damn good run, but they were fourth in the Six Nations and then Fiji. Any All Black coach under any circumstances would have expected to win all three of those games. And so I suppose part of it is just getting the systems in place, getting your, you know, your new routine in place, also giving Scott Robertson a chance to look at all of these players with much bigger tests, and I don't mean a pun by that, to come. Yeah, for sure. And look, I, I think uh, Scott Robertson and probably us as a nation um, should should be pretty pleased with where the All Blacks are sitting right now. No doubt about it. We're all debating the fact that the game plan needs to improve. Um, performance from certain individuals need to improve. And there's still some selections out there that everybody wants to chat about. But ultimately, you know, there was always that uncertainty when you have a changing of the guard and, and a new coach coming in. Um, some big personnel missing that have been a, a huge part of the All Blacks over the last decade. Then it's going to take a, a little bit of a hit the game and, and it's going to take a little bit of time to get your rhythm back and to really truly find out exactly what direction and uh, the, this team is going in and exactly where they are. Um, but winning test matches is paramount and we only accept winning here in New Zealand and they've managed to achieve that. So you have to give them a big tick in that box, but still a lot of work to do. Justin, there's now a three-week gap, um, and so I want to just establish it right now that rustiness versus Argentina is not an excuse, and it's not going to be tolerated as one. So what is the plan to keep our guys match fit and ready between now and then? Well, that's, that's a hard question to answer because I guess um, there, there are certain players that need more conditioning and need minutes, um, but there are other players that have had a huge volume, the Chiefs, and the Blues players haven't had a lot of respite. So they'll actually probably be quite looking forward to the rest and, and freshening up for what is a really difficult six, second half of the season. Oh, mate, face the you know, you know. Think about I know. What they've got coming up, you know, two against Argentina, two against Aussie, two against South Africa, and then England, France, Ireland, and Italy. They, that, that is a heavy schedule. So I think it's actually come at a good time. You know, they've had three or well, two very physical test matches. Um, and, and then an opportunity for some players to get some minutes in an all-black shirt. Uh, so now a chance to freshen up. Um, I'm not too worried that uh, they'll be underdone come Argentina. I think probably they need it. Um, they'll still work hard out, out, outside of being in camp, and then when they come together in camp and wanting for that Argentinian test, well, they start that massive run, don't they? Because they're not going to get a lot of respite until basically the 1st of December. Justin Marshall is with us. Did anyone... Uh, Proctor especially, obviously, uh, do enough to change the selectors' minds before the first Argentinian test. And I've got another couple of parts to this question I'm going to ask you in a second. But right now, with who you've seen selected for the England test and that one, is there anyone in that uh, versus Fiji that you think, OK, that guy could perhaps move the incumbent out? Well, I think what a few players did um, get themselves into conversations, and that's key. What you want to do is right. put pressure on incumbents. At the end of the day, I guess we've probably got to look at the successfulness of the English series was, yeah, it was nail-biting. Yes, it was dramatic and tough, but at the end of the day, 
that starting 23 uh, won those two test matches. And, and and ultimately, they've done nothing wrong. And they weren't as good at opposition Fiji. So players are going to look better. There was no blitz defence. There was more time on the ball. So players had an opportunity to look a lot better because they are under less, less pressure. And that will be taken into account. But equally, there will be elements and parts of the game that the selectors looked at and, and saw uh, good synergy, good combinations, and equally good work rates. So I certainly feel that what they will probably look and trend towards is what they were targeting as their starting 15 for the English test. They got through both of those pretty much unscathed, probably TJ Perenata apart. Uh, and um, I think they'll probably maybe look at including some of those players that did get in those conversations on the bench that hadn't been there in the past. How much better, Justin, do we have to be against Argentina than we have been in those first three tests? We have to be good, Marty, and, and that's probably the thing that everybody's slightly overlooking. Argentina will not lie down. They, they have already got the monkey off their back yeah, yeah. being able to mm-hmm. beat the All Blacks on our own soil. That's so right. that's no longer a mental hurdle for them. Um, they are a very well-balanced side. I watched them play their two test matches, the last two. I didn't see their first against France, but the two they won. Under Felipe Contempomi, I think they are a better balanced team. They're playing a better style that suits their big running loose forwards. They've got good strong centres and some firepower to finish out the back. Um, well directed in the halves as well. They'll come here um, in, really, in a really good mindset. A, that knowing that they can win here, but B, knowing that they don't have to do that usually shitty travel that they have to do. They usually yep. get ambushed by travel. They can come here and prep for a week and then be in New Zealand basically for three weeks to take on the All Blacks. So I think we've got to be very, very careful that we don't look any further than Wellington and then Auckland and then move on to South Africa. We've got to make sure that we keep our feet firmly on the ground or that old cliche, that dirty old banana skin yep, <laughs> could yep, very well yep. um, come up and bite us. So we've got to be careful because they, they will be a very good side and a hard side to put away. Mm, thank you for that because yeah, I just need to put the handbrake on because I was already in Africa, mate. So, okay, so let's just... <laughs> <laughs> you are, mate. You're not alone. Don't worry about that. <laughs> you know, so and the, the way I look at it now, though, and at the start of the year, I looked at the schedule and it didn't really occur to me, which is probably pretty stupid, but it does now that I actually think... Justin, if you could have written the build-up, it's actually been near perfect, hasn't it? Because, as I say, the first three yep. tests were all there to win and 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 we got away with being a little rusty against England, sure. Now Argentina is another step up, I would believe, and that the physicalness of that should prepare us well for the next assignment. Mm-hmm. I'm not looking after past Africa to Australia at the moment. I'm just looking at these n- next two, and Argentina are going to bring it real hard in the forwards, which is what we're going to, to need to do to prepare ourselves for those two matches over there. Yeah, we are, and you're bang on. And, and I, I think that physicality will, will be really important. Um, and, and we know that the, the Argentinians are good at set piece as well. Um, and like I said, they've got some real talent in the back row. You know, Luguizi Mon, Pablo Matera, you know, the Crema. Those guys are all big, hard ball carriers. And, and if you lay down and you, you decide just to go half by, they'll they'll run right through you. So it's good preparation like you say, for going to South Africa. And they would, they don't get it easy, Marty. Like South Africa have got to travel all the way to Australia and they've got two test matches on the bounce against Australia. Then they've got to do the same travel back to South Africa right. as yep. what the All Blacks have to do to get to South Africa. So, you know, they, they are uh, as vulnerable as what we are with the travel and also having two hard test matches in front of them. So we've got to make sure that we, we recognise that and prepare and look after our players um, so that when we hit the ground in South Africa, we're ready to rock and roll. But... What we want to do is have a team that's confident that's won two test matches against a very good side, one of the top sides in the world, convincingly and and without too much drama. I'm going to play a little game of yes or no with you, OK? And just all I want is yes or no answers with this. If Sam Kane is fit and available, which looks likely, then four questions for you, yes or no answers only. Number one. Does he get added automatically to the 36-man squad to face Argentina? Yes. Is that a complete no-brainer? Yes. Does he start at number seven versus Argentina? No. Could you see him coming off the bench? Yes. You've answered the question for me then, because, okay. <laughs> Honestly, you know what, Marty? The thing is, you've fallen into a massive trap here by getting me like that, because I was pretty, what, what would I say? I was pretty good at um, doing school examinations, um, tests and all that 
at the multi-choice yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. That was my speciality, mate. A, B, C, or D. Like, I could roll that out there. No, I didn't know the answer, but you used to guess pretty well. 